Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Netta Ofer. My co-authors are Fiona Bell and Marella Allister, and I'm excited to present our work on designing direct interactions with bioluminescent algae. In this work, we present a design space exploration with dinoflagellates, which are bioluminescent algae naturally found in marine environments. The bioluminescent phenomenon is a chemical reaction that occurs whenever dinoflagellates are physically stimulated. Whenever physically stimulated, the oxygen in the dinoflagellates environment increases, causing a luciferin luciferase chemical reaction and production of light in the organism. In terms of interaction design, this phenomenon can be seen as immediate feedback to physical stimulation in the form of light emission. This mechanism holds opportunities for HCI and interaction designers to design direct physical interactions with living matter. However, we propose a design approach that aims to shift away from previous approaches of using living matter in interaction design as a material or tool and towards a relationship between the living organism and the human user. We propose an organism-centered design approach inspired by more than human notions of design and the livingness quality of the organism at the center of the interaction. Organism-centered design prioritizes the needs and well-being of the organism by first focusing on identifying the environments in which the organism can thrive in and only then exploring the available interactions within those environments. Since assessing the organism's well-being and experience within the interaction is challenging, we suggest a framework that can help designers establish boundaries when interacting and working with an organism. In the next slides, I will present the components of our proposed framework and demonstrate how we applied the framework to exploring direct and physical interaction with dinoflagellates. The framework consists of four components, form, reception, feedback, and control. The form component investigates the various shapes this environment can take and the various materials the organism can thrive in. The reception component investigates the well-being of the organism in this environment. Designers should assess if the organism is thriving in this environment, how long it takes the organism to adapt to this environment, and if this environment is stressful for the organism. The feedback component is meant to assess the behavior of the organism within the environment. Designers should ask, what are the available feedback abilities of the organism in this environment? What are the qualities of the behavior when interacting with the organism? Can the feedback of the organism be perceived by the human in this environment? And how long does it take the organism to respond or change its behavior once it's interacted with? The control component addresses the human user's actions and evaluates their potential impact on the well-being of the organism. Designers should ask, what actions can the human perform within this environment, and do they harm the organism? How does the human interact with the organism in this environment, and to what extent can the human control the organism's response or behavior? We applied this framework in our design exploration with dinoflagellates and found three successful environments. We determined the environment successful when the dinoflagellates thrived in it. The three environments we found are closed, porous, and open environments. In the following slides, I will present the aspects of each environment and an interaction example in order to demonstrate interactions in these environments. Transparent containers can be used as closed environments for dinoflagellates. Whenever physically stimulated, the whole container will light up with the dinoflagellate's light. Such containers are used in lab settings 
Hence, the dinoflagellates can thrive in these containers for long periods of time. We designed dinoflagellates checkers ponds to demonstrate interaction with closed environments. Porous materials, such as sponge and foam, can hold dinoflagellates in their pores and act as porous environments. The light feedback by the dinoflagellates is local to wherever the human user applies physical stimulation. Spraying the dinoflagellates culture onto a porous material is also a possible interaction. Dinoflagellates soaked into porous materials can be used for contact games, such as hopscotch. Dinoflagellates in and on open containers and surfaces can be used as open environments. Open environments afford interactions of mixing, pouring, and directly interacting with the culture. Open containers with the culture can be used as a basket for a ball game, providing feedback whenever the player manages to get the ball in the bowl. With an organism-centered design approach, living organisms can be considered as active entities in the design process. Growing and maintaining living cultures also emphasizes the livingness of the organism allowing the designer to form a relationship with the organism and design interactions that can benefit all entities involved. As with all work with living matter, there are design challenges and limitations. However, we hope our work will encourage the design community to further explore physical and direct interactions with living matter and design with dinoflagellates, while considering the well-being and needs of the living organism. Thank you for watching and please reach out if you have any feedback or questions.